Good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Adlam with Youth Pledge for Employers, and I'm delighted to be joined by Lisa Sutton from Care Development East. Hello, Lisa. Hello. Hello, thank you for sparing the time to be with me this morning. Um, and I guess the start of a 10 would have to be, can you tell me a little bit about um, Care Development East and the Next Generation project, please? Okay, so Care Development East supports uh, residential um, care homes in Suffolk. Um, and they they basically support them with information, advice and guidance um, and also funding um, for qualifications in health and social care. Um, the next generation project is um, to one side of Care Development East um, and our role is to support youngsters or people that want to work in health and social care to have a better understanding of the career options that are open to them. Um, because sometimes when, when you say health and social care, um, people think of nurses, doctors, and it's much bigger than that. Um, there's you know, 350 careers in the NHS, for example. So mm -hmm. um, there's lots of different roles um, that you can do. And that's our role to support people to have a better understanding. And we do that by going in schools, we attend career events, um, we do let's talk ses sessions. Um, so if you want to be a paramedic, um, we get we get a paramedic and um, the students can talk to a paramedic, find out a bit about their job, qualifications, what to do, you know, things to expect and um, and we also do health and care academies. Um, we recently just done a junior academy um, where we were looking um, supporting people 10 to 13 year olds um, just to have a little bit of an insight into health and care, um, support them have to, you know, to enjoy do activities like um, first aid, a um, bit of a on from leading lives um, and to give them a bit of an understanding of what to expect in health and care. No, that's brilliant. Thank you. I know that, you know, you say you're going to have so much going on within the project. It's probably difficult to give a concise overview mm. of it, but no, that's really interesting. And it's also really interesting to hear actually you're sort of targeting, um, you know, I say sort of 10 to 13 year olds, as you said, to get them um, aware of the sector and the kind of skills they may need to go into it um, that early. Um, you sort of touched on there, as I say, on some of the um, sort of um, experiences you can get of young people to inform them about health and social care. Do you, is there any sort of um, any training or any practical qualifications, qualifications that you point them towards as well? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously there's two routes that you can take into health and social care. Um, you've got the apprenticeship route. Um, so if people didn't want to go to university, um, you could do an apprenticeship. Um, that's quite nice because um, you get paid as you learn. Um, sometimes for certain qualifications it takes a little bit longer um, but at the end of the day you get to the same point um, at the end um, and then you've got obviously the other route you've got the degree route um, where you can go to university and do your studying um, and you can do that local if, if that um, university um, runs that course or you can go further afield if you want to um, feel like you want to develop yourself and um, have different experiences. No, brilliant. Thank you. It's it's a really nice or concise way to say sort of sum up both the both those routes and to know that, you know, as I say, depending on what people have got going on in their lives or, you know, what they think is the best um route for them that they've got choices. And you touched on this a minute ago and you know, you, you sort of touched upon, as I say, there's a lot of roles within health and social care and you know, you can go lots of down different avenues to get into them. What I was just going to ask if you can maybe summarise briefly is how do I put it? Different roles will require different traits, if you see what I mean. So some people might um, have skills that means they'll be suited for certain roles and not others. Can you just give me an example maybe of a couple of different roles within health and social care and maybe the different traits and characteristics and personalities that maybe say a younger person might have that might suit them better towards certain career paths in health and social care? course um, you know some youngsters might want to work with people um, and they you know have good communication skills um, so you know you could become a nurse you could become a nursing assistant if you didn't want to go do your nursing training um, you could be a carer you could be you know support um, senior support carer um, so there's different routes that you can do where you can have um, communication 
Um, but if you didn't want to um, have that social aspect of it, um, then you could work in, you know, you could work in the labs, um, you could work in pathology, you could, um, you, you know, where you're, you're doing a fantastic job and you're still supporting um, because at the end of the day, without pathology, we wouldn't know what, what's wrong with us. Um, mm. So you, you would be doing all the testing, so you wouldn't be actually face to face with um, with customers, um, but you would be behind the scenes um, doing a fantastic job um, diagnosing um, infections, diseases. Fantastic. No, it's, it's really, really interesting. And as I say, to us, if you hadn't touched on, as you say, the, the, the sort of roles there and the diagnosis and, the, and those kind of roles. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to I wouldn't know they exist or I wouldn't sort of think that it's sort of something you can just go into, if you see what I mean. So, no, that's really, really interesting. And it sort of leads me quite nicely on to the sort of next question I was going to ask, which is if I'm a young person enter, interested in the career in health and social care, as you've said, obviously, there are some if to go down certain roles, there are certain qualifications you need to have and certain routes you have to go. But what kind of things can I be doing in my spare time have, to have my CV? What kind of interest can I have? If you mean, what kind of things can I be doing to sort of best prepare me and maybe give me the skills needed, as you say, sort of to go down the various routes in health and social care? Of course. Um, Health and social care, so work experience, volunteering. Um, there's fantastic opportunities in hospitals, both West Suffolk Hospital and Ipswich Hospital, where they um, you could do work experience and you can do volunteering. You can support people in the wards. You know, we we know it, it's it's tough at the moment, um, and you know everybody's roles are stretched in health and social care. So any any type of volunteering work is a fantastic way of gaining that experience. But it, what it does is it also supports you to instead of sign up to do a qualification for three years, for example, you get a bit of an insight into it by doing work experience and volunteer work. You actually find out, do I actually really want to do this role? You might start to you might start to do that role um, and then think, oh, actually, this isn't for me, but I might want to do something else. So it's a good way of finding that out before you actually sign up to a degree or an apprenticeship. No, thank you. That's that's a really useful insight there. Um, that, that thank you for that. Um, the next question I was going to ask. I'm going to take a bit of a tangent now. As I say, I'm going to sort of talk to you actually now about your project work, as you say. And you know, as I say, project is one of those terms where, how do I put it? A lot of people will know the term project, and people outside of project work might just think. OK, I know the term project, but I don't actually really know what that entails, if you see what I mean. So with you in this role working on the project, as you've explained, you know, what the next generation project is doing. What kind of skills do you need, if you see what I mean, to sort of facilitate you in your project work? So um, communication, communication is a good key. Um, listening you need to you know you need to be able to listen to people's views you need to find out exactly what is needed um so what areas so we, we have a lot of communication with um, pharmacists at the moment local pharmacists are really struggling to to have um people working in that sector um so you know we we can support them with that by highlighting so when we're at career events, school events, you know, we, we can sort of promote that area. Um, obviously nursing, social care, um, working as a care assistant, support care assistant, you know, people think just because you work in social care, you can't develop those skills. You know, there's a lot, lot of people out there that have worked as a care assistant and now managing care homes. Um, so it's, it's a good progression that you can develop for that. Um, but juggling um, is another skill you need to have, being able to sort of time manage and um, and yeah, answering emails as well. Um, okay. You've got to be sort of fairly good on the computer um, because they, you get a lot of emails and, um, you know, um, yeah, and sort of organisation really. No, br brilliant. Thank you. And I and I like that you sort of you've touched on it there, as you say, sort of about, yep, yeah, got a lot of emails, got to be organised. And one thing, you know, 
um, we look to do as a project is to sort of give people an idea of the sort of the good days in roles and the bad days, bad days, and what exactly sort of happens on a typical day. And I know there is no such thing as a typical day. I will throw it out there right now. But if you had to talk me through sort of the closest thing, sort of a typical day could be for you, you know, I say working on the next generation project, you know, sort of what would that entail roughly? So basically, you know, when I first start and um, it could, it could, you know, it, it's not a nine to five job. Um, a lot of the time it can be, but um, we, we have to, you know, like when you have school events come in, a lot of them are in the evening because it's convenient for parents to come in. So we go out in the evening, we go out at the weekends. Um, for example, Junior Academy was at a weekend on a Saturday. Um, so, you know, we have to make sure that we, um, you know, we time manage and basically um, that's, yeah. No, brilliant. Thank you. And um, the next question I was going to ask really is I'm not saying you didn't wake up one day, you know, and say, you know what, I want to go and work um, at Care Development East on the next generation project. You know, I'm not saying you didn't wake up and have that exact um, precise career in mind. But I was just wondering if you could sort of tell me a little bit about your career path and how you came to sort of be in the role you're in today, really. Yeah, of course. Um, so basically, um, I worked in care myself, um, worked as a support worker with residential um, learning, learning disabilities, I've also worked in hospitals, mental health hospitals, and then I developed my career from there. I became an assessor um, and an IQA, so I supported people to do their um, apprenticeships in health and social care. And then I, I went more into um, supporting and advising. Um, and here I am now. Oh, brilliant. No, it's a, it's a really, um, you know, really interesting career journey. You can sort of see the natural progression in how you've gone there. And, um, you know, as I say, you've touched on the various health and social care careers. And, you know, you've said that you sort of, you've been on the front line there yourself. And, um, you know, in going back to sort of when you were on, on the front line there, as it were, I sort of said about good days and bad days. What were the sort of the good days and the positives you found in your sort of your experience working in health and social care? And what were the challenges on on the tougher days? Um, so, I mean, obviously, good days is um, where everything goes smoothly. But um, <laughs> supporting the the residents, um, you know, helping them to have a, a good, fulfilled life, um, supporting them with activities. So, for example, if you're supporting somebody with a learning disability, you know, um, you support them to do things. You don't do things for them. Um, you, you support them to keep those skills um, and go out into the community, go to cinemas, go shopping, do things that we do. Um, bad days probably could be um, time, um, not having the time to be able to do what you want to do, funding, um, short staffed. Um, you know, if there's staff sickness, then you might not be able to support somebody as, as best as what you, you wanted to do. So, for example, say, for example, somebody needed two people to take, you know, support them out to go shopping um, and there wasn't enough staff, then obviously that would, you know, you would have to do another day when there was more staff. Um, which, and, and that's, you know, quite tough because, you know, it, it's quite difficult because you, you want it, you want to go out there and support them. Um, but yeah, time and funding, obviously, um, you could always do with some extra money. Um, but yeah, you know, bad days, you know, I, I can't think of a very bad day, like, you know, but because it's all good. It's all good. It's supporting people. So, you know, what better, better role to work in? No, definitely. And you touched on it there, actually, which is, as I say, I'm assuming that working out for social care, you need to, as you say, you need to enjoy what you're doing. You need to be passionate. You need to be, you know, enjoying the fact, as you say, you're making other people's lives better. Um, and, you know, are, are there any other sort of, as say, core skills that sort of other than those things that you think, you know, if you're going to sort of pursue a career in health and social care, these are things you must have or must work on. Okay, so in social care, you don't really need a qualification to go into social care. Um, as long as you're caring, you've got empathy, um, you can communicate 
um you can support somebody because at the end of the day you just you need to be a good person yeah. um you, you need to be able to have th those type of values um to work work with somebody in social care health um if you wanted to progress into a professional career then obviously you would need qualifications but again you would still need those skills as well because you're supporting people you know you you would want somebody to treat you how how you know they would like to be treated how you would want to be treated yourself um yeah. and you have to remember that um so but yeah so so obviously you know you would need those skills for nhs but you would also need if you wanted to go into nursing or if you wanted to be a paramedic for example um or work in pathology you would need some form of qualification whether it's a, a degree or whether you decided to do uh, apprenticeship no, thank you. And it's really interesting, as I say, to hear about those. I say those core skills you need across the board is just say whether you're pursuing a career in health or in social care. Um, my final question, really, just to wrap up, Lisa, and I've asked this to every um, employer or person I've spoken to in these employer talks, is that taking into account, as you said, about, you know, your career and the lessons you've learned and, you know, the the roles you've had. If you could go back now and speak to, say, let's say 17, 18 year old Lisa, you know, um, you know, having the knowledge and experience you do now, if you could go back and give young Lisa one piece of career advice, what would it be? School's not everything. <laughs> and why why I say that is because I think there's a lot of pressure and schools do a fantastic job, don't get me wrong, um, but sometimes people struggle. And if you don't get the grades, you know, there are other ways out there to get the grades. That is just the beginning. School is just the beginning. Once you leave school, that's when you start actually properly learning. Um, and there's lots of things, you know, GCSEs. If you don't get the grades, it's fine. You can do functional skills. You know, there are other qualifications out there that you can carry on doing um, to reach that career. Um, just because you haven't, you know, achieved, you know, what you, you set out to do. It just might take you a little bit longer and that's absolutely fine. For example, social care, you know, for myself, I did my level two and my level three um, apprenticeship in health and social care. So working in social care, you can still get a good qualification. Um, you can get an apprenticeship, um, which is a fantastic, you know, way of, um, you know, learning and and having an actual qualification in what you do. Um, but that's that's what I would say. Don't put pressure on yourself.